Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Shipyard Champions from Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today, a new task, and it's taking part in the 1950s, so let's have a look. Uh, sent in by Pont Iron Wolf, and it's going to be any nation for my fleet and their fleet, which uh, already gives me a lot of options. Weather slash time of day, your choice, plus one if set to random, starting range 30 clicks, unlock off. So no ability to get additional hulls from other nations, for example. Pre-battle options. Plus one point per five years lower in tech compared to the enemy. Now the enemy in this case is going to be a similar fleet to mine, which is three battleships, three heavies, and six DDs. So if I take um, these guys on as they are going to be 1950s and I take 1945, I'm going to get a tech advantage, which is decent. Every 20 years of tech behind, um, you may take one additional battleship, heavy cruiser, and two additional DDs at no cost. Um, so, if I am 1930s, I'll get four battleships, um, four heavy cruisers, and eight destroyers. I think 1950 versus 1930 is going to be a really bad idea. Um, you can take this back 1910 and 1890. Um, most destroyers in 1950 are heavier than 19, or sorry, 1890s battleships, so I'm not doing that. Two additional DDs, no thank you. Or uh, two point for that five year step if you also forego the additional ships. Uh, no thank you. No thank you. Well, it might be viable. It might be viable. Um, they're 1950, I'm let's say 1940. I get two additional points, which is okay if I just forego... The, sorry, I get, yeah, two points for those five-year steps. So if I take 1940, I'll take four points base. Plus one point per battleship or CA or two if you uh, have left them behind when the enemy fleet sails. Great. Um, I'll probably not bring the DDs. I don't think the DDs are going to be useful. Not especially in 1950. I mean, torpedoes are very easily detectable. Everybody has sonar. Um... I mean, we're just shy of cruise missiles at this point. I still don't know why we can do 1950s, but sure. I am already planning on leaving behind all my destroyers and potentially all my heavy cruisers as well. Minus four points to have one additional battleship, two uh, heavy cruisers and two additional DDs. No, thank you. The mail must go through. The head of state has sent some personal mail on board this ship. Successfully protecting it will earn more favor with command, though beware. The head of state's wrath if the ship is sunk. Interesting modifier. Um, add one transport to your fleet, plus five if it lives, plus... Well, minus five if it dies. Nice. Plus three for battleships sinking, plus two for heavy cruisers sinking, plus one for a DD sinking, and minus two points if 75% of your force is sunk. So, let's not sink. Um, let's make sure I take three heavily armored and heavily armored battleships into the fray and take down all the enemy fleet. We've got a lot of designing to do. Better get to it. So, let's set up the battle first, because this is going to be very important when it comes to my scoring. I'm going to get as many points as possible. So, I'm going to forego having a battleship, sorry, having uh, heavy cruisers and destroyers. Per two DDs I leave behind, I get a point. Uh, per battleship or CA I leave behind, I also get a point. So, this is three points that I'm not taking in heavy cruisers, and another three points in destroyers that I am not taking. When it comes to my choice of enemy, um, I do not want the Germans, because they got some really, really good ships, really good hulls, really big hulls at that. The French, yeah, they're okay. Uh, the British, no thanks. Although the British don't have a super battleship hull, I think. So that's options. The Chinese have a pretty tall hull. The Spanish might not have a really big hull yet. So those would be a good candidate, because that limits the amount of firepower that they can put on the battleship. Austria-Hungary um, is okay. The Italians have a pretty sizable ship, but I'm not sure if it's the biggest. Soviet Union gets a big ship, and the US, hell no. So we're going to take on the Spanish. When it comes to my nation, I'm thinking Japan. And I'm thinking Japan because they got not only big battleships, but they also have the ability to get really good long-range bonuses. Really good accuracy. Now, um, when it comes to the weather slash time of day, it's going to be your choice. But you gain a point if it's set to random. So, of course, we're going to random. 
Um, I don't care about ship or shared designs because we don't really have any. So I'm just going to be designing a battleship from the Japanese. I need this thing to have a couple of different capabilities. I need it to be able to see very far. I need it to be able to shoot very far. And I need it to be able to be very accurate at both. So I want something that has a really good stability. This one's 88. This is 87 and a half. Resistance 93. Resistance slightly less at 89. But I mean, the hull is just 30,000 tons more. There's no budget restrictions. So we're going to go with a big crew. Um, speed could be pretty useful. As I've seen in the previous battle, range is also important to have. And let's have a close look at the beam. A wide ship tends to be more accurate. Why is the game running like it's a PowerPoint? That's weird. There, 12%. Okay, 12% beam, plus 10% base accuracy, minus 50% accuracy penalty from waves, plus 10% accuracy from uh, cruising speed. And we get a bit less acceleration, a bit less turning rate, stuff like that. Less operational range, don't care. More engine weight, don't care. Yeah, I want to have a wide ship. I'm not sure if lowering the draft is going to be a good idea. Minus 22 draft gives me plus 13 base accuracy, but also minus 15 accuracy from cruising speed. It does give you less maneuver or accuracy penalty for maneuvering, but I'm not planning on maneuvering a whole lot anyway. Um, if I put this to 22, the other direction, or 18 and a half, I'm going to get less base accuracy, but more base accuracy from cruising speed. So tandem those, you get a 10% cruising speed bonus there. You get another 15 there, but your base accuracy tanks. So I'm just going to keep it at zero. Probably safest. When it comes to propulsion, um, I'm looking for something light. I want to have a lot in armor and guns. So it's probably going to be gas turbines because that's 59,000 tons. Uh, give me the best oil so I don't have to bring as much of it. Give me an AUX-3. I might upgrade that later. Let's take... Yeah, you know what? The, sh the propeller shaft for this ship is not going to be that important. Simply because I don't really care about its ability to go fast or go slow. Or, well, turning rate would be nice. But something like having a balanced or unbalanced rudder is a bit more useful for turning rate. Um, steam steering gives you a bit of a buff if you go to electric or even hydroelectric. Um, yeah, let's take this one. I'm going to keep the rudder on balanced because this is 136,000 tons now. You don't, well, you basically don't turn at all. Um, I'll take an anti-torp 2 because it adds up very, very quickly. All the anti-floods, all the bulkheads. Alrighty then. Super Pagoda Tower number 2. 64 long range accuracy. The modern tower is only, and <laughs> still a lot, 54. 34 base accuracy, 35 base accuracy. On this hull, even a super pagoda tower looks pretty small, actually. Now keep in mind, I'm building a ship that's essentially twice the amount of displacement that Yamato had. Um, and I'm going to have three. So I have a substantial amount of firepower. Stereoscopic range finding to once again buff long range accuracy. Um, acoustics, yes, I would like to hear a torpedo coming, but I rather doubt it's going to be that useful. Gun aiming speed is useful and also reconnaissance is useful. I need to be able to see the enemy. Uh, once again, towers, we're looking for long range accuracy. This is nine and a half. This is ten. I think the things is pretty much decided. It's going to have to be this one. Funnels. Can this thing do with one funnel? <laughs> Not really. If you got a, an engine that big, or rather a hull that big, you're going to need a heck of an engine. So we're going to go with two funnels. Um, I cannot influence natural boilers. Although, is that exploit still there? Uh, give me turbines. Give me forced and go back. Nope, they fixed it. Because you could keep gas turbine or the, the boilers didn't get changed so you could have these unforced go back to gas turbines and they'd stay unforced but apparently they fixed that 
All right, so now I have about 50,000 tons worth of armament to put on this ship. Options, options. The enemy starts at 30,000 meters range, so that's 30 clicks. Um, it is tempting to take a 20-incher, but I would rather not. These are Mark Vs. We are speaking of 1950. So, a 20-inch gun with a crazy amount of length. Um, this is going to have a lot of accuracy. I can't... What? You're not even going to let me allow the... Ah, oh, there it is. I was going to say, where's my accuracy overview? Um, 30,000 meters... Four and a half to five and a half, but that's a single barrel. I'm using a dual barrel. And we're looking at about the same number, but that is base accuracy. That's not even counting all the bonuses that I'm going to be getting from things like crew, range finders, uh, radar. It's going to be far better, but the problem is such a long barrel, such a long reload. I mean, this reload is going to be what? Like a hundred seconds or something? Where's my stat? Game. Fine. Be like that. Here's the gun. Uh, reload. 70 seconds. It's actually not even that bad. You can do 17,000 points of damage with HE. Or about 10.5 with AP. It's actually not that bad. All things considered. The only thing is this thing turns like a brick. Which, I mean, it's a, it's a bit heavy. It's 3,800 tons. <laughs> You're basically trying to turn a destroyer around on a pivot. Um, it turns 1.4 to 6 degrees per second. I could go for a mixed armament, I guess. Because I don't believe the game cares anymore. So that might be feasible. The problem is these things are ridiculously heavy. And are going to be ridiculously overperforming as well. At 30,000 meter range, you can pen 12 inches of deck armor, and that's with semi-armor piercing shells. You can also pen 35 inches of belt armor. Oh, that does mean I can pen pretty much anything I'd like. In one shot. You know what? Why not? Why not? I know it's going to make you people happy. You guys like to see big guns, and you cannot lie. So, yeah. You're going to be getting a battleship armed with 20-inch guns. The secondary guns are going to be pretty important on this thing to make sure destroyers and cruisers don't get involved. I am very much interested in close calls with torpedoes and other nonsense. So let's make sure that those don't stand a chance. Uh, the ship's going to be sailing broadside most of the time. And that means I'll have eight barrels firing a very, very, very sizable projectile every 70 seconds. Let's make sure that that does as best as it can. Um, a cap ballistic shell is probably going to eradicate most things in one blow. Because at uh, 30,000 meter range, it's going to have 6 inches of armor pen. Or, holy shit. 23 inches at 20 kilometers with, he with HE? That is nuts. 24.3. So, yeah, we're not going to be using the fire meta per se. It's just going to be throwing an enormous amount of high explosive at a target. And just watch it go up. I think that should be the goal. Secondary armament. Casemates. Yeah, right. Um, qu what? What is this contraption? Is that new in 1.4.0? 0.02 live R. Um... An 8-inch quadruple gun? They weigh quite a bit. Reload 12 seconds. Range 24 kilometers? Holy shit. Okay. I think they're okay, but I think they don't fire fast enough. Um, look at that. On this hull, an 8-inch secondary almost looks like it's a 5-inch. Maybe it's because the main guns are so comically enormous. Can we at least make the ship look okay? Yeah, that won't turn. Uh, that will. 
and that will, and that won't. Okay. Make sure these things hit out to, uh, I don't know, the moon. What's your range? 28 kilometers. That's ridiculous. I love it. When it comes to armor pen, I'm fine with these things firing semi-armor piercing. Um, I don't care about cruisers. I can handle a cruiser. The main guns are going to eliminate a cruiser in one hit. I care about destroyers. Those six enemy destroyers are, I think, my nemesis. And then, of course, we also have the tiny issue of there being a bunch of battleships. Why is my pitch 50%? That's a lot. Uh, if I add 25 inches of armor belt, I'm putting a lot more weight towards the core of the ship. That might fix it a bit. But it's still... It's a lot of pitch. It's get... <laughs> It's getting better? Right. Oh. Gotcha. It's getting better because I'm extending my citadel to crazy lengths. Right. That would be it. Um, what's that port weight of set that we got? Is that one of the guns? Did I put a main off-center? I guess I've had to. Oh, hello. There we are. Hold on. Is it possible to put these things... Oh, it would have been lovely if I could put these things on the side. That would have been so overpowered that I understand that they didn't do it. No! Hold on. Oh, it's too big. I'm going to need something a little bigger, but I think... Don't tell me. <sighs> oh boy. <clears throat> oh boy. Okay, so this ship is going to be massively overweight, but I will have guns everywhere. Because I can apparently put these on barbettes. Which is bizarre. I don't think it'll turn. Right, will you turn? Or will you not turn? You'll turn! I like you already. Um, is it helpful having them here on barbettes? Probably not. But these, yes. Because they will have better firing arcs. So let's take the 8-inchers and put them like over there. And increase the barrel length. I can even increase their size. But the game doesn't quite like that because now they get too big. So let's put that at 8.0 flat. So these things can now super fire over the other 8-inchers. Which is something I didn't have before. Now, the game does have a bit of aft weight offset, so let's fix that. Uh, I'm also going to pull this back in. I'll just live with the pitch. I mean, how much worse can it be? It's going to be 11-inch base accuracy debuff versus, what, like, 7? 9. And I get 5,000 tons back, so I'll happily take that. I'll probably have to add another gun here to make sure the ship is a bit more bow balanced. Uh, let's take another four belt. What is so heavy on my stern? Maybe we need to ship, shift things forward a bit. Let's go. All of you, forward. Forward offset, point two. Much better. Much better. You. I want guns pointing like this. Is it a monstrosity? Yes, it is. Is it going to blow things out of the water at about 70 kilometers? Also, probably yes, because the range on these guns is 87 kilometers. And I actually believe that we can probably hit things at 87 kilometers as well. Now, I'll take a 7-inch main deck. Um, let's take a 5-inch fore deck and aft deck, and I'll reduce something else elsewhere. 
three inch superstructure. Mm, maybe I'll 22 inches is probably a bit much. Because if the enemy closes to that range, something else has gone quite badly wrong. Balance the four belts. Yeah. I can live with this. I mean, she's not pretty. But she will kick ass. That's what I'm banking on. She will kick ass. So, um, Yashima. 20 inch guns. Extremely long barrel. Really good reload. And this, well, as the cool kids say, I believe this thing slaps. Let's see if it does. To battle. The range is 30,000 kilometers. Well, that's a bit much. 30 kilometers. 30,000 kilometers would be somewhere almost circumnavigating the Earth. Um, this thing has a pretty sizable firepower. It's 18.3 inch guns. Considering they're pointing upwards and turning my way, they have range. Um, aside from that, apparently the AI thought the new fire meta is something I have to try. And decided to put 6.4s everywhere. 6.4s everywhere. This thing has 30 of those guns. Um, for some reason it said decks are no longer cool. We're going to put them all on barbettes. Uh, because reasons. And, uh, yeah, that's a pretty heavily armored, or <laughs> pretty heavily armed battleship. Heavy cruisers. I forgot to add the transport shit. Heavy cruisers. That's a stern heavy build. Interesting. They got quadruple somethings. 5.1s. Triple 8.3s on the bow. And a couple of triple 8.3s on the stern. Not a whole lot of torpedo launchers. Next to my ship, this thing looks like a destroyer. Speaking of their destroyers, um, I would love to, but I can't. I can only see that they have 5.2s, uh, a couple of 2-inch guns, and beyond that, their torpedo range is... Yes? What's your torpedo range, little one? It's not likely to be 40 clicks. All right, who would like to get the first high explosive treatment? Let's slow down to full speed. I'm not sure why the game always has this weird artifact, but okay. And let's go for battleship first. You seem like a nice candidate. And we got Kotetsu, Yashima, and Tango. Well, it takes two to Tango, but we have three. Oh, that rumble. 30% chance to hit? And that's... <laughs> and that's after your recoil? Dude. This is going to be a long design process and a short build at this rate. Hold on, even the 8s are in range? Really? 42% chance to hit? Woo, incoming... I wonder if they have a chance to pen. I think they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bow, stern, deck, superstructure, turrets even. I didn't even armor the turrets. Well, I didn't change the armoring on the turrets. So that's the thing. Um, recoil is almost completely fixed. So we're just waiting for the guns to load. And for the sterns to also join the fight. Oh, crap. I didn't account for this. Whoa. We appear to have been hit. Oh boy. I expect to see this thing destroyed. 78%? That's... Jesus. Yeah. Well... Okay, you're not destroyed, but you did take a beating. Where did we pen him? Deck, belt, 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 belt. Okay, high explosive is no go. Armor piercing is a go. Armor piercing at this nice little range of 32 kilometers is definitely going to pen. And considering I'm firing semi-armor piercing shells... I'll be able to, well, counteract any kind of ricochets. 
because my shells will no longer care about ricochets. And look at the chain or the the difference in damage. They've done 315. I've done 8,000 after one salvo. There's one little thing I didn't quite look into. You know this uh, this thing called flash fires. It's not something I'm eager to see. Uh, it's going to make a hell of a bang when one of my ships goes up. Fortunately, I only lose if 75% of my force is sunk, and I'll lose two points if I do. So the chance of that happening is fairly remote. Here we go. Fire. Let's see how you take this. What's the, sh the muzzle velocity on these things? 1700 meters per second on high explosive? Bonk, bonk. There it goes. You're super strong. There go. Okay, bye bye. Ah, this thing died too quickly for me even to say uh, what was getting hit. And I think they don't even know what the hell just happened. They just got. What the fuck? <laughs> Like, the hole on the side of that ship is too big for the game to comprehend. The game is going, yeah, well, we... I, I don't know. This, <laughs> this one's even worse. <laughs> Holy shit. I need to have more of these ships in my life. Also, by doing this, we're immediately eliminating their capability to do any kind of damage to me. Because their battleships are just out of the fight pretty much instantly. And considering that happening, their 18-inchers, which are by far the longest-reaching guns that they have, are instantly eliminated. Or at least badly, badly bruised. As Yoshima lands a pretty big hit, doing almost 3,200 points of damage. No, we are not switching fire. Don't do that. You're firing high explosive? Unless you got some sort of really high pen on those, that's going to do absolutely nothing. Like, it'll scratch the ship a bit. Did you actually switch? Surely you're not firing your 20-inch guns on a destroyer. I mean, the shells for these ships are probably more expensive than the whole destroyer. So, no, we're not doing that. We are at cruise speed. That's good. Accuracy is about 46%. Let's set the Tango to the other ship. Oh, she's about to fire. Hold on. I don't want to waste that salvo. Uh, you're going to take care of that one. So we got two ships. The Kotetsu and Yoshima going for that one. And Tango is going to go for the trailing ship. She has not found the range, but with, <laughs> with one salvo still in the air, she actually has. Accuracy of all shells so far has been 19%. Uh, theirs has not been bad either at 13%. Yeah, this is a ranging shot from Tango. She only fired one turret. And you're going to have issues. 7,000 points of damage. Yeah, 4,800, 2,292. She's bleeding badly. Really, really, really badly. Yashima is doing uh, not very hot, but her fires are very quickly coming under control. She did lose a bunch of crew through that, though. A little bit less optimistic about that. Oh. That was you? Yeah, that was you. I didn't fire meta this thing to death. It just, you know, it kind of died. Oh. Okay, I definitely need to use 20-inch guns, especially the Mark V, a lot more. Because this is just absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm going to warn headphone users, because the 20 inch oh, oh, never mind. They'll probably be deaf by now. Uh, the 20-inchers are about to fire. You'll hear this as we are looking at the ship from fairly close range. Uh, ye be advised, if you're not deaf yet, and you're wearing headphones... You soon will be. You're welcome. Uh, did that do any kind of real damage? 
Yeah, a little bit. That's more like it. We're also setting fires with the high explosive secondaries. Now, these are not exactly the right shells for it. I mean, that's max HE. Oh, there she goes. Um, it's a capped ballistic HE. So it's not exactly well designed to deal with all sorts of um, setting fires. But then again, the fires aren't exactly what we're here for. Is this a ship? Is this a cruiser? Where are the cruisers at? Oh, these are the cruisers. Primary's on that. Secondary's on that. Off you go. Let the 8 inches do some work. Uh, have we taken damage? Sure. 2.5k. Have we done damage? Yeah, about 49,000. When it comes to points, I'm already at uh, plus 3 points per battleship sunk, so that's 9 points. I had, what was it, 6 points from not taking heavy cruisers or DDs. So that is another couple points. Uh, that is 6 plus 9 is 15. And now it's basically a matter of time until the rest of these ships meet their horrible, horrible fate. Although, you know, in a way, this is potentially the most humane thing to, or the most humane way to take a ship down. Because instead of watching your comrades get blown apart one by one, you all get vaporized merrily together. Yeah, see, there it is. <laughs> you won't have time to mourn your friends, because, well, they too will have issues. The only problem I might have is that the DDs escape. That would be unfortunate. I bet these DDs are pretty quick. The 8 inchers are working hard to take, well, shots or whatever they can spot. They're kind of geared towards the cruisers, but they're not hitting the cruisers at the moment. Some shells are, but it's mostly destroyers that happen to get in the way that I'm currently doing damage to. There we go. 20 inch shell landing in an area near you. And even the splash damage might take out ships. I mean, it probably won't, but it would be funny if it did. Go on. There's no time bonus, as far as I know, for this task, so... I can take all the time taking these ships out, but uh, my HE doesn't particularly care for waiting around. And instantly starts dealing twenty th or sorry, 2,000 points of damage. Maybe I should fire higher, or armor-piercing. They don't ricochet anyway. Let's have a look at the 8 inchers blasting away. So their reload was what? 11 seconds. Keep in mind, a heavy cruiser tends to have 9 8 inch guns. Maybe 12. It can also be 9 inch guns, but uh, I have 12, sorry, 10 per side. So, I'm carrying, like, two heavy cruisers per side of the ship. Well, maybe not two, like, one and a half. It's, uh... A substantial amount of firepower. Come on. I didn't think the 20s are finding their marks very well. 82%, come on, then I expect a result. There it is. Secondary, switch the DD. Any DD will do. 86%. Come on, let's have it then. One of them's gone. Come on, come on, come on. So close. Yes, that's more like it. I'm surprised this thing is still here. Considering the damage it took. Boom. You're gone. 10,000 points of damage convinced even that ship. It was time to pack up and leave. Oh, my head inches are switching targets. I was wondering. Hold on a moment. I believe we might have a splash from a torpedo? Yeah, we do. 
That effect was an incoming torpedo. That's not good. Because that's probably a lot of incoming torpedoes. So... We're going to detach the group. Yashima is going to go all back emergency and so is Tango. And apparently this thing can stop... In about 30 seconds. Yashima is... Is actually reversing. That's very impressive for something 130,000 tons of warship. What's my acceleration supposed to be? 0.6 knots per second. That's pretty good for a ship this heavy. I'll take it. Accuracy is ridiculously bad though. 0.8. That's with long barrels. Now, I'm going to send in the Kotetsu. I'm going to keep Yoshima and Tango on cruise speed. We're getting some damage in on these DDs now. There's still a heavy around, right? We take all of those out. Oh, they're all gone. Okay, uh, a high explosive it is, because you guys... Well... It's going to be a, a pretty funky DD that takes a shell like that and survives. That was an incoming torpedo. There's another one. Yeah, see? Had my ships been here... It wouldn't have been... Uh, oh, there's one veering off course. Would have been pretty bad. Oh, crap. Oh, we got them ID'd. What type of torpedo are you sporting? Come here, Estrella. 22-inch... 23 kilometer range, pretty invisible. So what, electrics? Or oxys? Yeah, oxys, okay. Uh, Kotetsu should be fine. Can you boost your speed even more? Increase to 29 knots? The fact that you can make this thing move at 29 knots is a remarkable feat of engineering. Look at that, everybody. Everybody sent their torpedoes this way. How many launchers do these little things have? Ten. Ten per. So, you're not vulnerable. You're a threat. No, you're not a threat. You're not a threat. You're dead. You're not a threat. Well, you're not a threat anymore. Uh, boy, have I got news for you. We're going to push in. We are going to push this ship right in. Because then the 8-inchers are going to be more accurate. Not for lack of trying from these DDs, but now that they have sent these fish, they're going to be sitting, what, 15, 1200 seconds reloading there. So I'll have a moment and uh, be able to take these guys down. And I've taken, again, 3.2k total damage. I have taken a Torp. Oh, you took a torp. Oh, nothing too bad. Jesus. I think this is the last one. The Uloa. And she's uh, not a happy camper. Gone. Done? Yeah, we're done. Nice. 20 inch guns. Mark 5. These guys never stood a chance. They're pretty big ships still. 81,000 tons. But crewed by cadets? Oh, no, never mind. They all have that. Because they all died. And the game immediately goes, nope, crew training was cadets. No veterans here. Um, okay, let's add up the points. Okay, points time. Um, when it comes to points, we have... Left behind battleships. So uh, plus one per uh, CA left behind is three. Plus one per two DDs left behind is another plus three. 
Um, minus four points for having one additional BB. I didn't do that. So that shouldn't be a problem. The mail must go through. I forgot about those, unfortunately. So I could have had five more points if the ship had survived. Plus three per battleship sunk. So that is plus three is another nine points. Plus two per heavy cruiser sunk. Plus three is in six points. Uh, plus one per DD sunk is another six points. So I am adding up. We're looking at a three plus three plus nine plus six plus six is 27 points. I think it's pretty good. Um, could it have been better? Yeah, probably. I might have been able to do this with just one battleship. Um, one battleship with those 20s. I think it would have had a pretty good chance, but... She would have had a, like three of those 18-inch gun ships firing at her. Um, that would be more dangerous. Beyond that, I might have been able to score an additional point there. And I forgot the five points from the mail must go through. It's a bit of a waste. Could I have done this in 1945? Possibly. But I think 27 points is still a good outcome. Hope you guys enjoyed that firepower. I uh, hope you guys can still hear me. Uh, considering the enormous blast from those 20s. Be sure to watch that again, and I'll add another clip here at the end. Hope you guys enjoyed the battle. Let me know if your thoughts are down below, and in the description down below, check out all the other contestants, because they also build ships, and they also try to get as many points as possible. So let's see how those did. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for more battles.